Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. In the meshless name of Yahoshua Mashiach, this is Yahweh's servant, Reginald M. Graham. And we're delighted to be able to come to you once again with another message from the word of Yahweh. This is Come Out of Her, My People broadcast with your host, Reginald M. Graham. I want to warn you, this broadcast is not for the faint of heart, ladies and gentlemen. We bring the truth raw and uncut. If you love truth, if you are a truth seeker, you have tuned in to the right broadcast, ladies and gentlemen. We don't beat around the bushes, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we don't chase rabbits. We let the chips fall where they may. And we do not apologize for declaring the truth. Well, we're going to get right into our message on this day. What black people know about the Most High is from a Roman Catholic perspective. All Christian denominations articulate and interpret the Bible from the eyes of, of Caucasians. Christianity is the white man's version of the true faith. When I exposed the true origins of Christianity, many viewed me as an atheist and not as a believer because the majority of people equate Christianity with the truth because Christianity teaches the core fundamental truths of the father of creation, the son of redemption, the life, ministry, death, burial, and resurrection of the Messiah. Roman Catholicism and all Protestant churches embrace this theology. Though I am not a part of organized religion, I believe in the life, ministry, death, burial, and the resurrection of the Messiah, Yahushua Mashiach. To be irrefutable, ladies and gentlemen. But if you reject the Christian religion today, the majority of Christians view you as reprobate, as an infidel, an unbeliever, and an antichrist. But only a few today know that Christianity doesn't represent the truth. Christians today are against 95% of the Bible and all religious history. Let me share with you why I am not a Christian. First of all, I have studied the origins of Christian history. I was a Christian for over 50 years of my life. But when I began to do extensive research, I discovered that many beliefs today in Christianity has pagan origins and have nothing to do with the Most High. The majority of practices and customs that Christians hold to be dear to them are unscriptural and derived from paganism and the occult. So with a good conscience, I could no longer be a Christian. See, the way Christianity have deceived, seduced, and beguiled billions, it presents the core fundamental truth, the death, burial, and resurrection of the Messiah. Christianity have stowed from the Bible and from ancient pagan civilizations. The Roman Catholic Church is the mother of Christianity. The scriptures say she is the mother of harlots, the abomination of the earth, Revelation 17 and 5. She took a few fundamental truths from the Bible and incorporated numerous ancient pagan custom practices and belief into her religion. The Roman Catholic Church fused a few biblical truths with a lot of ancient pagan customs, practices, and beliefs. Fuse them together to invent Christianity. This is why Christianity is extremely seductive because it presents some truth, but people are blind to the evil and dark side of it. Just like a, a, a serpent, ladies and gentlemen. Glory to Yahweh. Uh, false prophets will, will get you by truth, ladies and gentlemen, but before you know it, they will put their venom in you. This is uh, the same thing with Christianity. 
Christianity was invented or created by the Church of Rome during the 3rd century A.D. October the 27th, 312 A.D., Roman Emperor Constantine, one day before the Battle of the Million Bridge, Constantine allegedly had a vision of a cross in the sky along with the phrase, in this sign you will conquer. Before the Battle of the Milvian Bridge, Constantine ordered his troops to paint crosses on their shields. Constantine was victorious. After the battle, Constantine converted to Christianity and the rest was history. Roman Emperor Constantine made Christianity the official religion of the pagan Roman Empire. Now, ladies and gentlemen, think about it. Just think about it. If Rome, ancient Rome, one of the, the most immoral, uh, wicked, evil, the debauchery that, 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 ladies and gentlemen, was infested in this, this kingdom. I mean, one of the murderous, most wicked uh, uh, empires that ever existed on planet Earth. Now, think about this. They were pagans. I mean, they worshiped many gods. If they embrace Christianity, what that tell you about Christianity? What do that tell you about Christianity? If Roman Emperor Constantine, he was a murderer, he murdered his wife, he murdered his son, he raged war for many years, ladies and gentlemen. If he embraced Christianity, he served many, worshiped many gods. His, his favorite god was so inventus, the sun, sun worshiper. Now, if he con converted to Christianity, what does that tell you about Christianity, ladies and gentlemen? Many of Constantine's pagan subjects followed suit and converted also to Christianity. Christianity was conducive to the Roman pagans because they could continue to worship ancient Roman gods. Ancient Roman Christians worshiped Sol Invictus, the sun god. This is the origins of Sunday morning worship and modern Christianity today. Roman Emperor Constantine, after converting to Christianity, remained a sun worshiper until his death death. Roman Emperor Constantine presided over the Church of Rome First Council in 325 AD at Nicaea. This council is known as the Council of Nicaea. The Council of Nicaea was the most important ecumenical council of the Roman Catholic Church. This council changed the world forever. During this council, Amos Nicaea, the dates for Christmas and Easter observance were set at this council, ladies and gentlemen. Sunday was mandated as the official day of the Lord. The Greco Egyptian god Serapis Christ was officially made the image of the Messiah at the Council of Nicaea. The true Messiah, Yahushua Mashiach, a man of color, was rejected for Serapis Christ, a white European god with long hair, blue eyes, and lily white skin. At the Council of Nicaea, Yahushua Mashiach, a Hebraic master, was rejected for the white European god, Jesus Christ. Christian Roman Emperor Constantine and his pagan bishops were European white supremacists. This is why they rejected the true Messiah, Yahushua Mashiach, for the Euro European image of Serapis. They rejected Yahushua because he was a man of color. Ladies and gentlemen, Roman Emperor Constantine and his Caucasian Roman bishops could not allow a man of color to be the ruler and head of the Church of Rome. Also at the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD, the seventh day Sabbath was rejected for Sunday, the first day of the week. Sunday became the official day 
of Christian worship. They call Sunday the day of the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, now if you know anything about uh, church history, religious history, ladies and gentlemen, you know that Roman Emperor Constantine, he, he made an edict, ladies and gentlemen, in the 4th century, early 4th century BC, uh, AD, early 4th century AD, that if anyone was found worshiping on the seventh day Sabbath, it was an automatic death sentence, ladies and gentlemen. Roman Emperor Constantine uh, crucified hundreds of thousands of true believers that remain loyal to the seventh day Sabbath, ladies and gentlemen. The Roman Catholic Church changed the seventh day Sabbath to Sunday, the first day of the week, ladies and gentlemen, in honor of Sol Invictus, the Son God, ladies and gentlemen. Now, other doctrines were mandated, amen, at this council. We don't have time to elaborate on all of them. Hosea 4 and 6 says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And because they have rejected knowledge, Yahweh said, I have rejected them. Isaiah 5 and 13, it says, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge, ladies and gentlemen. Christians have no knowledge today. Yahweh's people have no knowledge. All this knowledge that we have at our disposal, but many people can care less. The Bible tells us in Daniel chapter 12 verse 4, it gives us a prophecy concerning the end times that we're living in today. It says, Man shall go to and fro in the earth, and knowledge shall be increased. Not only is technology, secular knowledge increasing, ladies and gentlemen, but scriptural knowledge, spiritual knowledge is increasing in these end times. Do you know why Christians hate me with a passion? Look at my comment section, ladies and gentlemen, and, and, and you see the hatred that they have against me. I mean, they viciously attack me, my person. They, they attack me because of this truth, ladies and gentlemen, that I'm speaking. It, it reminds me in the book of Acts chapter 7, ladies and gentlemen, when Stephen began to preach, ladies and gentlemen, they could not resist the wisdom that Yahweh gave him and his face shined like an angel's face. And the Bible says they gnashed on him with their teeth and they picked up rocks and they stoned him and cast him out of the city. And Stephen, before they killed him, he said, you stiff neck, uncircumcised and hardened ears, you do resist the Holy Ghost even as your father do, ladies and gentlemen. So do you know why Christians hate me with a passion? It's because they are ignorant. They are void of knowledge because the things I speak are foreign to them. They viciously attack and reject me. They speak evil of the truth and of things they have no knowledge of, ladies and gentlemen. I can't help that people are spiritually ignorant, unknowledgeable, unlearned, and illiterate. 2 Peter 2 and 2 declares, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of, ladies and gentlemen. People today speak evil of the truth. Speak evil things they have, they have no knowledge of because it sounds different. It goes against their religious grain, something they never heard preached in their life. They knock it because it's foreign to them, and they are knock it before they even do their research, ladies and gentlemen. You know, Apostle Paul said in the book of Galatians 4 and 16, he said, Have I therefore become your enemy? Because I tell you the truth. Friends, since I've been on YouTube, I have created many enemies. But you know what the Bible tells us? Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you and pray for them to despitefully use you and persecute you, ladies and gentlemen. So I bless all my enemies. I bless every one of you that curse me. May Yahweh bless you richly. I hope Yahweh bless you mightily. At the Council of Nicaea, the Church of Rome name was changed to the Roman Catholic Church. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, I'm like Stephen. I want to be like Stephen. I'm not like Stephen yet, but that I desire to be like Stephen. In book of Acts chapter 7, 
after they stoned him, they gnashed on him with their teeth, ladies and gentlemen, they killed this man. And you know what he said? Before he died, before he bowed his head, he gave up the ghost. He said, Yahweh, lay not this sin to their charge. He, he realized that they attacked him ignorantly, ladies and gentlemen. People, they did the same thing to Yahushua. Yahushua, they condemned him on a tree, ladies and gentlemen. But you know what Yahushua said? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I know many of you that come against me, that fight me, attack me, come against my person, ladies and gentlemen, attack me for preaching the truth. I know you demon possessed. I know you full of devils. I know that. I know many of y'all are full of devils. And and I agitate you. Truth agitates people. Yahoshua, the Bible say he was hated without a cause. And I realize that I am hated without a cause, ladies and gentlemen. At the Council of Nicaea, the Church of Rome name was changed to the Roman Catholic Church. The word Catholic means universal. Therefore, Roman Emperor Constantine and his Roman bishop hordes launched a campaign of evangelism worldwide. They went on a mission to spread Christianity universally. Now, let me get to the nitty gritty of this video. More than 99% of the world never heard the, the statement that I'm getting ready to make. Over 99% of the world doesn't know that the term Christian is over 2,300 years old. Ancient pagan Greeks and Egyptians called themselves Christians in the early 4th century B.C. Did you know that? I want you to do your due diligence and research these things that I am saying. It's all online. If you are interest, interested, interested in obtaining this knowledge. After the death of Alexander the Great, his empire was divided among his generals. One of Alexander's uh, closest and loyal general was Ptolemy I. Ptolemy was also Alexander the Great bodyguard. He trusted in him. Ladies and gentlemen, he was his close associate. After the death of Alexander the Great, Ptolemy became ruler and pharaoh of Egypt. Ptolemy the first started the Ptolemaic dynasty in Egypt. Now he was a, a Macedonian Greek. He wasn't even Egyptian. He wasn't African, ladies and gentlemen. Cleopatra, was a descendant, ladies and gentlemen, of Ptolemy I. Cleopatra was the last pharaoh and the last of the Ptolemaic pharaohs of Egypt. Ptolemy became ruler of Egypt in 323 BC. When he got on the throne in Egypt, he made significant political moves. He wanted to unify the Macedonian Greeks living in Egypt with the Egyptians. Ptolemy, being a Macedonian Greek, Ptolemy invented or created a new god there in Egypt. He called this new god he created Serapis Christ. Listen to me closely. Serapis Christ. Serapis Christ had a European look. However, Serapis Christ was given a Greco-Egyptian name. Serapis, Christ. The Greek god Zeus and the Egyptian god Osiris names were fused together creating Serapis Christ, a Greco-Egyptian god. Ptolemy's pagan Macedonian Greek and Egyptian subjects worshipped Serapis Christ. There were a sect of pagan bishops living in Alexander, the city of Alexandria, Egypt, that began to call themselves bishops of Christ in honor of their god, Serapis Christ. Later on, they called themselves Christians. 
Then all Ptolemy pagan subjects, both Macedonian, Greeks, and Egyptians begin to call themselves Christians in honor of their new god, Serapis Christ. Serapis Christians. These pagans develop the term Christian from the title Christ, Christian. This was around 325 to 330 BC. Therefore, the term Christian has pagan origins. The first people that called themselves Christians were pagan Macedonian Greeks and Egyptians in the early 4th century BC. This was over 300 years before the birth of the Messiah, Yahushua Mashiach. Now, let me show you how the historians deceive us. The historians called the first century church that Yahoshua Mashiach built, he said in Matthew 16 and 18, upon this rock I shall build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The historians called the first century church that Yahoshua Mashiach built, ladies and gentlemen, we find in the book of Acts, Christians, this is what the historians did. This is their deception, ladies and gentlemen. They called them Christians. But they never mentioned in a religious context, ladies and gentlemen, that there were pagans in the 4th century BC living in Egypt that called themselves Christians. Over 300 years before the early church we find in the book of Acts. Now, this knowledge was hid from us. It was hid from us, ladies and gentlemen. You go online, do your due diligence, do your research, and you will find all this information that I'm telling you. The Bible says, prove all things, hold fast to that which is good. And out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Now, the first century disciples had this knowledge that there were pagans living in Egypt 300 years before them that called themselves Christians. Ladies and gentlemen, I cannot be a Christian in good conscience. Having all this knowledge that Yahweh has shown me, revealed to me, I had to leave the Christian church. I was a Christian for 50 years, over 50 years I was a Christian, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, but I could not no longer be a Christian. Through my due diligence and my extensive research, Ladies and gentlemen, amen, I found these truths out. And, and I, I wholeheartedly believe in the Bible. The Bible is Yahweh's word. But ladies and gentlemen, sometimes we need to go outside of the Bible and study history, church history. Study the origins of Christmas and Easter. Get knowledge of these things. Get knowledge of the origins of the a zodiac sign and uh, knowledge of birthday cakes. All this stuff is paganism, bobbing for apples, birthday candles, uh, the Valentine's heart, and, and all of these things, ladies and gentlemen. You can find the origins of fraternities, sororities, the Freemasons, uh, the Eastern Star, ladies and gentlemen, the paddle hat that they wear during graduation, all of this stuff, ladies and gentlemen. I've done extensive research. I found out that's why you never, you'll never, never see me with a necktie because a necktie, ladies and gentlemen, is symbolic of an obelisk. You ever seen an obelisk, an Egyptian obelisk? That's what a necktie is. It's just upside down. And it's an, a hangsman noose, ladies and gentlemen. But it's a Freemason symbol. Now, uh, do you, you, you know what the obliques were in Egypt? And, and you know, the Roman Catholic Church got a big, amen, oblique there, right there in St. Peter's Square, ladies and gentlemen. It's, that's a, it's pitiful. Do you know what, a, and they know what an oblique means. You know what an oblique, amen, represent? An oblique represents the penis, the phallic of Osiris, the Egyptian god, ladies and gentlemen. That's what it is. Washington Monument, we have a penis standing right there in the capitals, the nation's capitals who in USA a penis, inflated penis, ladies and gentlemen. It's amazing, a phalet. And that's what it is, ladies and gentlemen. You may not have this knowledge of it, but I do. And every time you wear a necktie around your, your neck, ladies and gentlemen, you're putting on uh, the penis, listen, you're putting on the penis of Osiris.
And you know how I learned this? Research. I learned, amen, what goatees come from and shaving your beard. I found out the pagan origins of all, ladies and gentlemen, of these things. And so some of these things, I know I go over y'all heads, but I do my research. But you knock me because you don't have this knowledge. And your pastors, your leaders, they don't even have this knowledge. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah 9 and 16, it's the leaders of this people that cause them the air and they that the led of them are destroyed. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I can go on and on and on why people wear black at funerals. I don't wear black at funerals because I know the pagan origins of it, ladies and gentlemen. It's a lot of things that people do. Uh, the fish hats that these bishops wear, and even in the Pentecostal churches today, and the Roman Catholic Church, you see the cardinals, amen, and the uh, bishops and the popes wearing those fish hats. That's Dagon, the god of the Philistines, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and you see all of these things, ladies and gentlemen, that's a fish hat. Glory to Yahweh. But you know people reject these truths. It's just a symbol of a fish. It's Dagon. You know, that's one Christian symbol, a fish, ladies and gentlemen. Even the symbol of a cross, that comes from Egypt, ladies and gentlemen. That's the, amen, the ox of Egypt. That's where all that derived from. And people accept these things today. But you, you have to do extensive research to find this out. And you can't just read your Bible to get this information, ladies and gentlemen. You have to do extensive research. So don't knock me because Yahweh is giving me knowledge. Ladies and gentlemen, in understanding, amen, and you're going to knock me because you're a dummy, because you're ignoramus, because you are illiterate spiritually, unknowledgeable spiritual, spiritually, and you want to knock me because you don't do your due diligence and you don't want to do your research. But I do my research, and that's why Yahweh has put me on YouTube to enlighten you if I can. And I got a lot of haters. Oh, my goodness, you go to my comment section on YouTube. I got a lot of haters, but I love all you y'all. I love all my haters. I bless all y'all that curse me. I bless every one of you. Bible tell me to do good to them to hate me. I'm doing good to every one of y'all. Bless the name of Yahweh. I'm like Stephen. Father, lay not this sin to their charge. I'm like Yahushua. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. I know some of y'all ignorant. Y'all don't know what y'all doing. Some of y'all don't. Some of y'all know what y'all doing, but some of y'all are just ignorant. You know, Apostle Paul, before he was converted, ladies and gentlemen, he was Saul. Before he was converted, he ran around persecuting the, the, the people of Yahweh, putting them in prison and putting them to death, ladies and gentlemen, going around looking for uh, the saints of Yahweh. And, but he did it in ignorance and unbelief. That's why the Bible says he attained mercy, ladies and gentlemen. He went around persecuting the people of Yahweh. He thought he was doing right. And many of you persecute me. You think you're doing the right thing, but you're just as wrong as two left shoes, ladies and gentlemen. You think you're right by persecuting me. You think you're right by calling me a, a, a cult leader, calling me all kind of names, all these derogatory names that you say about me, you slender me, you do all these things. But you know what? I love every one of you. Some of y'all going to come into the knowledge of the truth. Some of y'all going to testify. I used to hate that man that came on YouTube. I used to hate him, but I love him now because he, he declared the truth, ladies and gentlemen. Praise Yahweh. Now, let me move on. Now, the first century disciples had this knowledge that there were pagans living in Egypt 300 years before them that called themselves Christians. Let me ask you a question. If the early church had this knowledge, would they have called themselves Christians? Absolutely not. Also, the term Christian became a derogatory term, meaning buffoon and retarded. This is why a lot of Christians cannot receive this truth because they misinterpret Acts chapter 11, verse 26. In Acts chapter 11, verse 26, it declares, and the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. Notice here what it says. The disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. My question for you, who called them Christians? Did the disciples of Yahushua Mashiach call themselves Christians? No, they did not. Who called them Christians then? Well, that's simple. The world, the unbelievers and heathens call them Christians. They did not call themselves Christians. The term Christians has pagan origins 
and roots from ancient Egypt. Now, I'm going to close here in Revelation, ladies and gentlemen, chapter number 17. We're going to close here. And I want to show you a prophecy of what I'm telling you today. I want to show you this in a prophecy. Revelation chapter 17. And beginning with verse one, and there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vows and talked with me saying unto me, come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore, the Roman Catholic church that sitteth upon many waters. Her churches are all over the world, universal. That's what Catholic mean, universal, ladies and gentlemen. She sits on many waters. Waters here is, 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 is making reference of people and nations. Uh, Roman Catholic Church influences all over the world. Even here in Africa, we got many Roman Catholic churches here in Kenya, ladies and gentlemen. With whom the kings of the earth, listen to this, committed fornication. The kings of the earth committed fornications with her. You know, in the U.S. and many other countries, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, mostly every president that be elected, he put on a black suit, him and his wife, and they go to Rome. They take a pilgrimage to Rome. This is a custom. This is a tradition, ladies and gentlemen, in the United States of America. The, pre the, the president, Donald Trump did it. And, and even, even communist nations, ladies and gentlemen, they do the same thing. And they will put on a black suit. It's customarily. They'll put on a black suit. And the Pope will sit on his throne. And he will extend his hand out. And they will kiss his ring on his head. Hand, ladies and gentlemen, this is the bona fide truth of I've told you. The Roman Catholic Church raised armies. The Roman Catholic Church influenced. The Roman Catholic Church installed uh, monarchies, kings and queens and empress, ladies and gentlemen. No, from from throughout history, that's the type of clout and and and, and uh, credibility they had. And not only did they. Uh, install kings and queens and emperors and prime ministers and etc. Ladies and gentlemen, they even dispelled them. They took them off the throne. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the influence of the Roman Catholic Church. The kings of the earth have committed spiritually fornication with her. Now look at this. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. What is the wine of the Roman Catholic Church fornications? That's simple. Her dogmas, her traditions, ladies and gentlemen, her uh, customs, her practices, her pagan holidays, her heresies, her teachings, her doctrines. The whole world has been drunk by Rome. Mostly everybody go to church on what day? Sunday. That came from the Roman Catholic Church, ladies and gentlemen. The whole world have been drunk by the Roman Catholic Church and her teachings, ladies and gentlemen. Glory, her dogmas. Most churches, ladies and gentlemen, they teach what the Roman Catholic Church taught. And they all, amen, originated from the Roman Catholic Church. All Protestant churches originated from the Roman Catholic Church, ladies and gentlemen. Starting with Martin Luther. Martin Luther, the Lutheran Church. <coughs> the Church uh, Reformation Fathers. They all, ladies and gentlemen, uh, continue to keep many of the Roman Catholic Church teachings. Okay. The Bible said, the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of a fornication. The whole world is drunk with these teachings and practices and customs and doctrines and dogmas, ladies and gentlemen, and traditions of the Roman Catholic Church. The whole world is in a drunkard stupor. They staggering in their vomit, ladies and gentlemen, through this, pollu this pollution. Now, the Bible says, amen, in Revelation chapter 17, verse 5, I want to make it plain to you. It says, and upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots, the abomination of the earth. Listen what it says. She is the mother of harlots. She is the mother of the Protestant churches. She's the mother of harlots. She have daughters. Her daughters are all the Protestant churches, ladies and gentlemen. What do they all do? They Sunday worship, ladies and gentlemen. They keep a lot. They baptize in Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. That comes from the Roman Catholic Church, 
ladies and gentlemen. They observe pagan holidays. They observe Christmas, Easter, Halloween, Mardi Gras, Valentine, St. Patch. All of this comes from Rome, ladies and gentlemen, because they are her daughters. She is the mother of prostitutes, the mother of harlots. She is the abomination of the earth. Yahweh call her the abomination of the earth, ladies and gentlemen. And then as I close, Revelation chapter 18, verse number two, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, and have become the habitation of devils. That's, that's, that's Christianity have become the habitation of devils. Look at all these sex scandals. Look at the Roman Catholic Church. Look at T.D. Jakes. The power bottom, they say. And all, look, look at Eddie Long. Hot, full of sodomites and homosexuals. Full of devils, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Babylon has fallen, become the habitation of devils. The church has become the habitation of devils. William Murphy got a nightclub and that's, amen, playing sackling music. I mean, raunchy lyrics. I mean, talking about sex and horn and drinking and getting high and everything. They party into it in the church. It's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, uh, Babylon is falling, become the habitation of devils. Ladies and gentlemen, the whole of every foul spirit in the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. That's the church world. That's the church world. All these scandals. Uh, pastors coming out. Amen. Amen. Uh, pedophilia, messing with little children in their church. You can't even go to church, ladies and gentlemen, and keep your children secure. You got to watch your children like a hawk when you go to church because you don't know if the pastor's trying to sleep with them. Oh, my goodness. I mean, it is bad. Pastors getting busted for selling drugs, buying drugs, soliciting prostitutes, downloading, cross-dressing. Oh, my goodness. When is it going to stop? It's not going to stop. Ladies and gentlemen, it won't surprise me what's going to come out about Jamal Bryan and Creflo Dollar and Joel Osteen and Kenneth Copeland and the rest of these false prophets and Joyce Mize and Juanita Bynum and all these other false prophets, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to come out. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Babylon has fallen become the habitation of devils, the whole of every foul spirit in the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Well, we thank Yahweh for you tuning in with us once again with another message from the word of Yahweh. See, my friend, C.E. Wright, amen. I ain't forgot about you, brother. Amen. We love you. We love you. And we thank Yahweh for all of you. Amen. We appreciate Yahweh for his goodness, his mercy that he bestowed upon each and every one of us. Um, we, we would really appreciate if our friends, if you would like, share, and subscribe. You that have not been to our YouTube channel, go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. We really appreciate if you would do that. If you would uh, like, share, and subscribe. Well, until next time, may Yahweh continue to bless you and smile on you is our prayers. Shalom.